Here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Equifax has finally settled following their massive data breach, but as it turns out, none of the money will be going to you or me as previously promised. Facebook has bought Jiffy. Is this real life? Microsoft is now the biggest single contributor to open source. Can a computer write a hit song? We'll find out. And OnePlus is apologizing for an apparent accidental x-ray camera feature that lets users of its new phone see through clothing. Stick around, the full details are coming up. This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. From the newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. Equifax has finally agreed to pay compensation for the massive security breach it suffered in 2017 that led to the theft of at least 146 million people's personal info. But before you get excited, the money won't be going to you, but rather to your bank, which will be paid for the hassle of having to cancel your payment cards. That's right, the credit agency has agreed to pay $5.5 million to thousands of banks and credit unions who said they were injured by their customers' details being siphoned off by hackers, and a further $25 million to beef up data security. Equifax will also cover the bank's administrative costs, attorney fees, and relevant expenses. Which raises the question, what happened to the 125 that America's consumer watchdog, the FTC, proudly announced that we would get thanks to its record-breaking $700 million settlement with Equifax. It's been more than two and a half years since they were hacked and just under a year since the $700 million settlement was met, so it's perhaps surprising that not a cent appears to be for the people directly impacted by the cyber break-in. The $125 headline fig figure, it turns out, was made with the assumption that only a very small percentage of those el eligible would actually apply. But thanks to the sheer size of the leak, the issue was extensively covered in the press, and that massively increased the number of people who applied for compensation. This forced the FTC to admit that it hadn't agreed to a per-person fine, but rather a lump sum that would be split equally between applicants. Not only that, but behind the $700 million headline figure was a different reality. The FTC had agreed to just $31 million for the pot that was to be split equally among individual applicants. The rest was earmarked for those who demonstrated they were left out of pocket by the hack, mitigations, money for states, and so on. So while Equifax settles with states and banks and hopefully those consumers who rejected the FTC's terrible deal, it seems that no money will be forthcoming for those who have gone to the trouble of trying to get the 125 they were promised. Seven years ago, Facebook claimed not to support the 21st century's new favorite communication tool, the animated GIF. Oh, how times have changed. Now, Facebook's newest acquisition is one of the Internet's most popular GIF hosting sites. Facebook is making Jiffy part of the Instagram team. The deal is reportedly valued at about $400 million. According to Facebook, about half of Jiffy's current traffic already comes from Facebook products, especially Instagram. That's perhaps unsurprising given that Facebook's big three apps, WhatsApp, Instagram and Facebook itself, have billions of daily users among them. Jiffy was, in fact, the first service to make animated images work on Facebook. It created a workaround back in 2013 when Facebook's now laughable official stance was Facebook does not support animated GIFs. Although animated reaction images may seem, and kind of are, inconsequential in the grand scheme of things, the deal is likely to attract a significant amount of scrutiny from federal regulators. The Justice Department, Congress, and the Federal Trade Commission are already all delving into even the smallest, lowest value acquisitions that big tech firms such as Facebook have made in the last decade, scoring them for patterns of anti-competitive behavior. Jiffy is by no means the only GIF search and hosting platform on the internet, but it is one of the largest. Several other platforms, including Twitter, use its API for GIF support. Both Facebook and Jiffy promised the access will continue. In its announcement, Jiffy specifically said, For our API SDK partners and developers, Jiffy's GIFs, stickers, emojis, etc. aren't going anywhere. We will continue to make Jiffy openly available to the wider ecosystem. 
With the announcements fail, what the announcements failed to mention, however, is the fact that Facebook can now have access to all the data generated by those searches and API calls from other platforms. And using acquisitions to gather data on competitors is exactly the sort of behavior Facebook is under investigation for right now. Back in 2011, uh, 2001, Microsoft CEO at the time, Steve Ballmer, famously branded Linux a cancer that attaches itself in an intellectual property sense to everything it touches. But Microsoft has admitted it was wrong about open source after the company battled it and Linux for years at the height of its desktop domination. Now the pigs are flying because Microsoft's current president, Brad Smith, believes the company was wrong about open source. He says, Microsoft was on the wrong side of history when open source exploded at the beginning of the century, and I can say that about me personally. Smith has been at Microsoft for more than 25 years and was one of the company's senior lawyers during his battles with open source software. He adds, the good news is that if life is long enough, you can learn that you need to change. Microsoft has certainly changed since the days of branding Linux a cancer, the software giant is now the single largest contributor to open source projects in the world, beating Facebook, Docker, Google, Apache, and many others. Others. Microsoft has gradually been adopting open source in recent years, including open sourcing PowerShell, Visual Studio Code, and even Microsoft Edge's original JavaScript engine. Microsoft has also partnered with Canonical to bring Ubuntu to Windows 10, and it acquired Xamarin to aid mobile app development and GitHub to maintain the popular code repository for developers. Microsoft is even shipping a full Linux kernel in a Windows 10 update that will release later this month, and it moved to the Chromium browser engine for Edge last year. Microsoft is also collaborating with open source communities to create power toys for Windows 10, and the company's now open design philosophy, philosophy may, may mean we'll see a lot more open source efforts in Windows in the years to come. We've got to take a quick break. I've got some cryptocurrency numbers for you, and more of this week's top tech stories are coming up with Becca Ferguson. Don't go anywhere. All right, we don't have a crypto corner for you this week, but I wanted to still share with you kind of where things are at in the market. We saw a dip about four or five days ago where cryptocurrency values went way down. But right now, things are up like 9 to 10% as far as Bitcoin goes. We're at about $9,694.08. Ethereum is at $213.12. Uh, XRP is still just a micro coin at 20 cents per coin. Uh, let's look at, uh, at some of those little guys like, well, Litecoin is not a little guy, but I should say that uh, they're up 6.8% this week uh, at $45.14 fiat value on each individual coin. Let's see if I can find TurtleCoin on our website, category5.tv slash crypto report, because I'm curious where things are at these days. Head on over to our website, category5.tv slash crypto report, and you'll be able to do the same. Just scroll down and you'll be able to see the current value of each of these coins. Scala kind of all over the place right there. And there's our turtle coin holding fairly consistent. Uh, a little bit of a drop there, but right now sitting at a whole 115 micro pennies. <sighs> When is it going to go to the moon, folks? When is it going to go to the moon? I'll never know. Hey, don't forget, cryptocurrency, uh, the whole market is volatile. It's always changing, and we suggest that you only invest what you can afford to lose. It's a lot of fun, and it could go really well for you, but uh, at the same time, it could go all sorts of awry. So keep that in mind. Now, back to Becca in the newsroom. Thank you, Robbie. Last week, we learned that Facebook trained their own chatbot AI using posts from Reddit, but a team of musicologists have done something similar, setting their songwriting bot loose on the social platform. A team of Dutch academics who, after an experiment in songwriting using artificial intelligence algorithms, inadvertently created a new musical genre, Eurovision Technofear. 
The team used AI techniques to generate a hit predictor based on the melodies and rhythms of more than 200 classics from the Eurovision Song Contest, an annual celebration of pop music and kitsch. These included ABBA's Waterloo and Lorene's Euphoria, 2012, also Sweden. But to generate the lyrics for the song A Bus, which the team members hoped to enter in the inaugural AI Song Contest this year, they also used a separate AI system, one based on the social media platform Reddit. It was this that resulted in a rallying cry for a revolution, with a song that crescendos as a robotic voice urges listeners to kill the government, kill the system. Like the notorious Tay chatbot developed by Microsoft in 2016 that started spewing racist and sexist sentiments after being trained on Twitter, the fault lay with the human sources of data, not the algorithms. Jane Spidgekvert, a student who worked with the AI and ran the lyric generator stresses, we do not condone these lyrics. She says the team nevertheless decided to keep the anarchist sentiment to show the perils of applying AI even to the relatively risk-free environment of Europop. The use of AI in music composition is now on the cusp of the mainstream as more musicians and songwriters look for tools that inspire different types of music. The AI Song Contest, organized by Dutch broadcaster Vpro, is one of the first events to take the process of using algorithms to compose original music out of academia and avant-garde experimentation and into the commercial world. When the OnePlus 8 Pro was first announced, the photochrome mode appeared to be little more than an artistic color filter. While it produces some interesting results when photographing trees and plants, as it turns out, it allows the users to see through smoke or fog or clothing. The filter seems to work by capturing infrared light that is otherwise invisible to the naked eye. There are many professional uses for cameras that can see infrared light, such as allowing firefighters to see through smoke, but it's less common in a consumer device like a smartphone. Although the company has stressed that the photochrome filter cannot see through thick materials, it apologized for creating privacy concerns and causing troubles for OnePlus users and other netizens. The company said in a statement on its English language forum, while we think this camera gives users the ability to get more creative with the smartphone photography, we also understand the concerns that have been raised. OnePlus will remove the accidental x-ray functionality from its OnePlus Pro 8 Pro phone in an upcoming over-the-air update, the company said Tuesday. It's also temporarily disabling the camera filter that can see through plastic and clothing in the Chinese version of its operating system until the update is released, choosing to leave it operational in its global OS. Big thanks to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. Thanks for watching the Category 5 TV Newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And if you appreciate what we do, become a patron at patreon.com slash category5. From the Category 5.TV Newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. Thanks, Becca.